Hello to all Pathfinders. So my name is Pastor AJ de Villiers and I would like to welcome you to this online forum of honors for the Pathfinder ministry. You're here today because you're interested in learning more about what the Pathfinder ministry has in store with regards to honors. And I want to encourage you that if you would like to qualify for this honor, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, which is a bonus because you'll be receiving more information about honors that will be presented in the future. Then secondly, check the comments below and ensure that you fill in the form pertaining to this honor that you'll be watching. And remember to watch this honor completely because all the answers you need are within the video that's posted. So I hope you're going to enjoy yourself and that you'll sit back, learn a bit more and share this information with everyone that you come in contact with. May God bless you and may God keep you as you learn more about this honor that you'll be watching shortly. Enjoy. Good afternoon, everyone. So this is once again the Pathfinder Ministry from the Cape Conference. We have an a honor that we'll be presenting, the, the Lighthouse Honor. Um, this is a recording, so I'd just like to put it out to, to you because we don't have that many participants. It's actually just myself and Sister Moira. But I hope that you enjoy this, this Lighthouse presentation. And may the Lord bless you as you learn more about lighthouses. So welcome, Sister Moira. And I hope that you'll enjoy your time, even though it's not with a whole bunch of viewers. But I'm sure that you'll see that people will watch this video across the world. Um, okay. Good day, everyone. Thank you, Pastor, for the welcome. Great. Come, let's just have a word of prayer and then we can start um, this session. Father, thank you that your grace abounds in our lives. And as we study lighthouses today, we pray that you may bless each and every person watching this video, that you may continue to be with them, Lord, and that your grace may abound in all that they do. Thank you for the concept of lighthouses, Father. And may we continue to be the lighthouse on that, that verge that people can see that they have to come closer to you and that they have to come and realize that, that they are protected by your grace and by your light, Father. Bless us now as we go through this day and also this, this session. May your grace abound and your mercy flourish in our lives. We pray this in your name alone. Amen. Amen. So over to you, to Sister Moira. Thank you, Pastor AJ, and thank you for the invitation to the pathfinders and the leaders out there. This is a very interesting lighthouse honor, and I trust that when we are finished, that you will take Jesus as your lighthouse. This honor is very short, but very formative, and I believe that God will guide us, and as he's the beacon, the beacon of light for ships, he's also the beacon of light for us. So the question and answers, this is a very easy honor. So I pray that you have your pen available, even your Bible available, because we will use the Bible also in this honor. So we thank you for the GC preparing this honor for us. So we're going to start at this moment with the first question. And I trust that you will enjoy the honor with us, myself and Pastor AJ. So here we go. Okay, I'm going to share. Okay. My favorite um, lighthouses in the Western Cape here in my area is the one where there's a picture of the green point. They call it the Muli Point Green um, Muli Point Lighthouse. Now, what is nice about this, during summer, you always find seven day Adventists closing the Sabbath on the patch there on the grass they come with a picnic basket so if you're in any area any time of every anywhere and if the sunset or um on a um, sabbath evening you will find somebody of the seven day adventures on that point mm -hmm. then the one you, top to you my right um you will find that one is the one in fish hook now that is in the middle of an area where only they guide the nations to their um, safety. But it took them so long to build that lighthouse 
because they needed to start walking, working under the water to have that lighthouse on a specific rock. So it took them about four years just to build that lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Then the bottom one, there's a lot of stairs going up to that lighthouse here in Cape Point. Now they also have a bus service or a train service going up there and they charge you a fee but they always challenge me to walk up there. Now, whenever you walk up there, when you get to the top, it becomes narrower. The, 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 the walking space is fine, but the moment you're right at the top, you will find out that the stairs become so narrow that only one person can walk there. So that is what I like about the lighthouse. It is something that you need to walk up to and you need to, then you can reach the top area and see what is happening there. So the first question I have for you, what is the function then of a lighthouse? The function of the lighthouse is to serve as a navigational aid to ships by sending a beam of light, which provides signals. Now I can imagine why they need, had to build these lighthouses because there was such a lot of ships Racks and accidents on the sh on the areas of the shores where a lot of rocks were, mm. and the person who steered the ship couldn't always see, and a lot of accidents happen on the seaside, and that is the reason they have both these lighthouses near to the area where the ships can see. So the lighthouses is to serve as a navigational aid to ships by sending a beam of light. Now at that time, years back in the 1600s, there were not um, electricity for these kind of lighthouses. So they use a lot of other things. And in the honor, you will find out what kind of equipment they use to show, um, to, um, show out signs to the ships where they need to be careful to. So when were the first lighthouses of record built? Here you will find it in 280 BC. And that was in Alexandria, Egypt. And here you can see how this one was built in 280 BC. This lighthouse was built, but this lighthouse is no more there due to earthquakes. Hmm. So um, it is also called... The, and it's the famous lighthouse that is called also the Alexandra Lighthouse. And as you can see, it is on the island of Pharos in ancient Egypt. Now, I'm just going to go back a slide back where you can see that in 2016, hmm. the Minister of State, so they had an archaeology, um, and they find out these lighthouses on the um, to find out how can they make use of the um, lighthouse, the foundation that was left over. And they decided that they're going to include that into an underwater museum. I don't know if it exists. I don't know if the lighthouse is still there, but, and whether the underwater museum was established um, for sightseeing for the people who come and visit. Mm. So if you're in the area of Egypt one day, please go and check out if the, the oldest lighthouse is still there in the area. So, but in Cape Town, I'm going to bring this on a little bit near to South African base because in South Africa, we have 45 lighthouses, 45 mm. lighthouses. And the oldest one is in Cape Town, which was built in 1824. And this is the one that I liked the most, right? For me, um, people will walk on the beachfront and the lighthouse is very visible in that particular area. Then we have another one, as I said, in Cape Town that was built in 1860. And that lighthouse is on the top of um, point on the rock of the tip of Cape Point. 
And as you know, the, the two oceans meet, and people don't need to go check out how these two oceans meet when they're on top of these. And this um, lighthouse is 87 meters above sea level, yeah. right? So it's built and, and it was then electrified in 1936. So it was built in 1860, but as you know, it was electrified in 1936. And they say before that they used about 19 million, million candle power to, um, which that time became the most powerful light in Africa. And it is still to this day. So that lighthouse, people, the ships must pass the Cape Point area to get to the dock here in Cape Town. So that is a very important lighthouse for as a beam for the ships to pass. Can I say something on that, Sister Moira? Yes, Pastor. Um, so uh, added to that one, if you're in Somerset West on Helderberg um, and uh, you're at night, it's a very big chance that you'll be able to see the light of the lighthouse revolving around at night from Helderberg. Um, did you ever notice that from your experience? Yes, that's why I'm mentioning it, but you have to keep wow. a very, very good eye out and it needs to be a clear night because you'll be able to see that light from all the way over there. Wow, there you have it from Foster. So, and, and, and what is so nice, it's still there for as a, as a guide for the job, right? And look, it was built in 1860, Pastor, 1860. We were not even there that time. No. And what is a, a nice for me is the foundation of that lighthouse is firm. And that is what it should be for us in our lives too. Mm. So, and prior to that, before they had the, the electricity, they even used um, paraffin torches to show people the, the ships. Because as I said, that was actually a main area for the ships to pass. Oh. Okay, what are people called to study lighthouses and why? So they are called the Pharaohologists and they are called, they actually made called of the island of Pharaohs where the famous lighthouse was constructed. Mm -hmm. And remember the famous lighthouse was constructed in, in, in 280 BC. So people have an interest in these lighthouses. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the other question people normally ask, do all lighthouses have keepers? If not, how are they run? Now, a keeper is normally a person who has to see to these, that the, the, the lights at the top of those lighthouses are clear, clean, and it burns, it must, it must um, work every night. Do we have these people still running and going up to up that stairs? clean off the lights and those kind of things. Currently, the only lighthouse um, or the lighthouse keeper is, um, is in Boston, um, United States. And um, he's called the Boston Light, sorry. In the United States, only, he's the, that's the only lighthouse called Boston Light Keeper. All the other lighthouses are automated. So we don't actually have these keepers go and switch or clean the, um, the, the windows, as I say, or the beams outside or the cleaning the lights of the lighthouse or the switch it on. No, they are fitted automatic or automated um, switches for these lights to switch on or, um, during the day. It will switch off or in the light and during the night it will switch on automatically. And the next thing is, yes, there will be somebody to go check if these things are still in operation, but they are not there 24 hours, like norm, like previously, where people will tell you, hey, there's a ship coming, and we need to put on the candles, or we need to put on the fire for that, or you have to go switch on the light. No, the lighthouse, um, 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 lighthouse keepers are no more running these things on a 24-hour service. And then they have the fresnel lenses. Now, I'm not an electric electrician, but those are the material, specific material that they must use for these lights in the evening to move around, so like a rotation basis. 
And these are magnifying glasses I must also have in a working condition all the time. It's like in a, like in a ring like lens, focusing light on a single point. That is how, and it must be able also to, sh um, to shine right through thick fog. That is a type of lenses that they must, must use. So um, if you want more details, you have to go research yourself how these things work, but it's specific specific material that needs to be used for these lenses and for these um, lights to work every day, basically. And as you can see, uh, it, it's bright. It, those lenses give out bright light every single time when you switch on. And um, it's a pity that my audio doesn't work 100%, but you will be able to see how we operate. it is in a circle all the time in the circle and it's really bright during the night. And then the question is, what kind of fuel were they used throughout history? What fuels were used for lighthouses, right? They use fat, they use paraffin, Yes, they use candles. They even use some wood. And here I, sh I will show you. And many times I was wondering now, during the 1800s or the 1900s, where did they get all these um, candles? And how did they get all the whale oil? And how did they get all the wood to show the ships of, okay, to warn them to say, hey, there's a lot of rocks. Please don't go that route. So this, it, I can imagine how the workers have to gather all these things prior for an ship is coming to your area, please prepare yourself. So throughout history, these kind of fields were used for lighthouse lights. And there you can see it was wood, coil, whale oil, lard, kerosene, lots and lots of candles. And these are the things that they were using in those times. Now, if we had to go back to history, compare history to now, I don't think we will be able to operate um, um, the lighthouses maybe with candles due to danger maybe. And then we will have to have a keeper to put the fires on all the time. Um, to indicate um, where the dangers are. And I can, I can also imagine in my site that um, how angry maybe the, the captain of that boat was if they had to eat the rock here in Cape Town. Because if you go to Cape Town here between Sea Point and um, Moody Point, you will still find um, all shipwrecked still lying there of the um, 1800s. And the same in the area along the coast, you will find these kind of ships still lying there. Now, many times you also find out uh, is that these lighthouses only near to the sea seashore or the oceans? Are lighthouses located along ocean shores? If not, you need to list where you would find a lighthouse. Now you also find lighthouses in May at major rivers and lake shores. You will even find um, lighthouses between homes. If you think about Cape Town specifically, or here in South Africa, you will find lighthouses here in um, Strand Foster. There, Strand on your on your beachfront, you will find one between. On the near to the um, between that shops there, yes. On the on the walking um, area there. You so also find in Gordon's these Bay. These are these are the yeah. Sorry, Gordon's Bay. Gordon's yeah. Bay. There you are. And so and there you can see on the top. You will even find it in a small lake area. Here mm. you can see it. The rivers. That is how the lighthouse is, is situated. <clears throat> What is the lighthouse service called in your country? Now, as I said, I will bring it down to South Africa. Country South Africa has 45 lighthouses and they are managed and maintained by the National Port Authorities, Lighthouse and Navigation Systems Divisions. 
And then they have another section in the government. They are looking at the safety of the and property of sea, and they are called the South African Competent uh, Maritime Authority. And as I said, they are responsible for small vessels and and the safety of of, of ships. Hmm. So now a question came up to us now how will people know there's a ship coming or the lighthouse must be able to work the authorities will know when a ship needs to come and port in one of our areas and they will see that all the 45 lighthouses are in operation if it's still effective in our areas hmm. so it depends which area they're coming from that lighthouse will need to in operation for the, as a guidance. <laughs> so when a lighthouse is a visible landmark seen from the ocean during the day, it can be identified by certain markings. What are these called? These markings are called day marks. Now remember, lighthouses have unique day marks so they can be distinguished from one another. If all lighthouses were a, a round brick tower, a sailor would have, to have a pretty good idea of where he was to know which lighthouse he was looking at. So here you find different lighthouses, different colors, different shapes, and even different sizes. Mm. And each lighthouse have a specific meaning. Uh, not specific meaning, they are, they are standing out in the area and the color scheme also blend in from wherever they are. Now imagine all the houses was only one color, all white, and the houses around was also white. So it would have been difficult for the, the ships to see, right? Mm. So there you can see what, why, when, when a lighthouse is a visible landmark seen from the ocean during the day, yes, it can be visible. And those are the colors, most of the colors you find in your area. Um, Sister Moira? Yes. Um, do you know what is the the tallest lighthouse? Um, that is the question, um, Pastor. No, I'm not so sure, but I know there's one that's about 19 meters high. I wow. um, I think um, I'm not so sure, but most of it's about 19, 24 meters high. Could, could, we, could we maybe challenge the pathfinders to go and see if they can find some information on the tallest lighthouse? And maybe, uh, maybe they can even share, because this is going to be posted on YouTube, and they can share in the comments that they found the tallest lighthouse. Wow, that's great. And I will also look up on, on that. Okay. So that will be great to know so that we can where and where it is possible. Yes, yes. And maybe a little bit history of it, when it was bold and those kind of things. That will be awesome. Yeah. So we will give them some credit for that also. Yes. Okay. So now remember that most of the lighthouses have only the beam, the light. But then also sometimes they need to have a horn or a fog horn. Mm. So when the fog is very thick, somehow then the people must be able to hear or understand. Um, hear is something that warns us against certain things. So this ask, what is a fog horn? Why would one be used at a lighthouse? What are three things that affect or, or how far away a fog horn can be heard? And this is the sound of a fog horn. I just want to let you hear. And some fogs can be heard up to six miles or 9.6 kilometers away. Hmm. So that is quite far. So that fog horn must be very, very um, effective yeah. for the people. So I'm going to give you a few answers to that one. What is the reason for that fog horn, right? It's, it's a navigation aid. It's a warning of rocks, headlands, and other dangers to shipping. Audible signal when visibility is low. Then that is when the fog is very, very, very uh, thick. It's a very deep pitch. Um, they say it's more audible to human ears at a greater distance than higher pitches, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
the height above sea level is also important as it determines the distance at which a foghorn can be heard. Mm. And it can be heard up to 9.6 kilometers away. Mm. And that is very, very loud. So remember that the foghorn have his purpose. If you hear a foghorn in the area, then you must know they are giving a sign off to the Marines to indicate to them where the rocks are, the headlines or where the dangers are. And it must be able, the sound must be able to reach a far indication so that the, the ships can hear of the dangers that's lying ahead. So that is very important. Mm. So the next, and I think I like that idea because Imagine that the, the light is not good enough or this, uh, it becomes dimmer and the people can't see it. Like you just said, Pastor, that when the light is clear or very good, you can even see the lighthouse light from your area. Mm. So it's important that also the foghorn must be able to be heard all. Mm. Now the Bible guide us also to these things. They ask us now to look in the concordance and find out the meaning of light. And then you need to discuss that. What did you learn from that? So you have about four, five text verses that you need to know. It's in Genesis 1, 14 to 16, Psalms 136 verse 7, Ezekiel 32 verse 8. And you need to indicate us what does these um, text verses refer to. And I've given you some of the answers there, but maybe you see it in a different light. Maybe you will find another text verse mm. in your concordance about light. So there's only a few that I've highlighted in the Bible. All right. So it's important um, that light, light in the Bible determines something for our own lives too. Mm. And then explain why you think God's word is like a lighthouse. If you look at everything that I just said, it guided you. It guided the, the, the lighthouse guides ships, right? It navigates ships. But what does it do in your life as a lighthouse? What does lighthouse means for you as a person? There must be a message for you. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like to emphasize that I never have heard that the lighthouse was destroyed because of bad weather, mm. maybe tumble down because I um in the foot from the 45, I never heard that they have to destroy even one lighthouse because of the foundation. Mm. So the foundation and the structure of a lighthouse must be strong so that he can actually go through different kind of weather. So, and that is what the lighthouse, you need to explain why you think God's word is like a lighthouse. Mm. If you are firm and if you are strong and you believe, then, then the structure will stand firm too. Okay, so you must give your own understanding by that. Mm. And many a times, remember pathfinders that we have something that, we, that um, in our pledge, in our law, regarding um, having something in your heart, I am, and here John 8 verse 12 is saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Mm -hmm. So if you can memorize this, memorize and keep it in your heart and in your mind. So when you know you are walking in astray from, from the light, that you can say, I, God is the light of the world and I need to follow him. So memorize that verse, John 8 verse 12. Now the the honor indicate that we need to write a poem or story about a lighthouse light. And then you need to include God's light. Mm. So and then the the honor also say that you can use your guidance from Psalms 135 verse 7 to 9. And you can make, give us a five line, six line um, poem regarding the lighthouse. So I just copy and paste that. But if I had to put something down of myself about the lighthouse, then I and then I I would use probably that song. There's a lighthouse 
the, the song that is say there's a lighthouse built and he's giving us the guidance, then he, he should be my light. And when I need to be filmed, just as that light. So make up your own poem. Come and put a voice there on your, on your, on your, when you submit and give it to pastor and let me, let us put it out for the world to see what mm -hmm. is your poem regarding God's light and what he means for you. Then you also need to draw five lighthouses in different shapes. And as you can mm -hmm. see, Lighthouses have different shapes. You have a skeleton lighthouse, you have a square lighthouse, you have an octagonal lighthouse, you have a, a cylinder um, lighthouse, a spark plug, you have a conical lighthouse, and those are the lighthouses that you will find. And I need to encourage the young people, please don't write on these lighthouses. Young people have a tendency to make notes on on historical places mm -hmm. they use a cookie don't do that because these things have specific reasons why they build these things mm -hmm. so if you want to make a note for yourself make your own note take a picture and make your own story but don't write on the buildings of the historical places so if you need to draw your five lighthouses give us the history of these lighthouses mm -hmm. give us a story of the lighthouse where did you find it how what kind of shape is it is it still open can people still go and visit how much is it to go and visit um what is the time that still that is still open now in south africa there's only five lighthouses that is that is still available for people to go and see so please if you do find out where it where lighthouse is go and let people open and go and visit these lighthouses do one of the following A or B list the names and locations of five lighthouses in your state or province. Locate on the map the location of 10 lighthouses in your country. Now, if you're doing A, you need to give us the name of the lighthouse, the place where it's found, the history of the lighthouse, and pictures. And like I said, is it open for public and how much will it cost? Who should we phone to go and see these lighthouses? If you're going to do the the number B in terms of the map, you need to draw the map. You need to indicate where these lighthouses are. And the same, you can indicate to us where specific, and obviously you will have to have a big map if you're gonna do a, a B, so that we can go and visit those lighthouses if we never visit that in South Africa. Mm. Now, I've just, in, I've just uh, glanced through three areas, the Eastern Cape, Currently, I, there's about two that I saw, but there's more. The Bird Island is not an operation for people to visit because they have used that now is as an environmental mm. area where a lot of birds are and people can't go to that area, um, near to that area. So if you need to go there, then you need to go to the National Park and they will guide you or give you permission to go on that specific island. Then you have the Mabashi Lighthouse between East London and Port John's that is visible and you will be able to see it, right? The other four, and, and obviously there's more in the Eastern Cape. There's about another five more in the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. So you can go and check in the Eastern Cape regarding those. In Northern Cape, I was quite concerned about Northern Cape. I only found two. And what I've noticed in the Wonder Club by Lighthouse, it's, um, as you can see, it's wired off. And I'm not just sure what is the reason for that, because that is not, there's not a lot of history about that specific lighthouse. The same goes for the Port Nolliff Lighthouse. So if you have more than Northern Cape, please share that with us so that we can uh, in, um, get more information about the other um, lighthouses in the area of Northern Cape. In the Western Cape, there's a lot of lighthouses in the Western Cape. Mm. So up from the Western Cape, I would like to include the George area. So please, if you in that specifically specific areas in the in the Western Cape, please go and check out these lighthouses. Some of the lighthouses, as I indicated, are still open to visit, but many of us can just pause there, take a picture 
sometimes they do have a board up there telling you the history of the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. So make a note of it. Check even if you're there, check if the the beam is still um, in operation. Sometimes you will see it moves, maybe it's off during the day, but if you're there in the night, check if it's still on. If you're there early in the morning, check what time it goes off. So those are the things that you need to know. And then I always say, wherever you go, take a picture or take pictures, never write on these items because everything has its own story to tell. And I would like to challenge each pathfinder, each leader, if you're in the area, look out for lighthouses, mm. take a picture, make a book, a scrapbook, write it down. Even if you're not going to go back there, find out what the lighthouse means for um, what that lighthouse, what was his purpose for having that lighthouse in that area. The other question I like to bring, um, keep tell the pathfinders, make Jesus your lighthouse and the foundation is important. If your foundation is strong, then all the storms can come mm. because if your foundation is firm, then you will stay firm for Jesus. And that is my prayer that this lighthouse honor will help you to understand that Christ is the lighthouse for us, mm. right? So, and I'm glad that they've taken up the idea of the lighthouse because the lighthouse is built in an area where there's always wind, there's always water that goes against it. And they say when you when you see water goes against um, stone or iron, it brittle sometimes, it comes off, you know? It, deteriorate but somehow these lighthouses i see they change past a little bit but they don't fall off they don't they don't damage mm. so my my prayer is that for us to understand the lighthouse honor is that christ needs to be the center of your life so that you can be a light for others to lead to christ May the Lord bless you. And as you continue doing the lighthouse honor, that you will understand the purpose of a lighthouse in a specific area. God bless. Mm -hmm. If there's any questions, Pastor, you may ask. I just, uh, I think it's, it's important for us to remember that point that you just mentioned, that, that God is actually calling us to be a lighthouse um, in the area that we find ourselves. And he says, you are the light of the world. Um, why would you go cover your light? So, so let's, let's be the light of the world. And I, I love what you've actually shared regarding the lighthouses. And it's actually encouraging to, to see that we can go on a, a treasure hunt, if I can put it like that, to see if we can go and find more lighthouses in the area and actually research what happened in that area. Because you said that there were many wrecks that took place on Cape Point specifically. Um, and maybe that's another, another research project that our pathfinders could head into and go and study the, the wrecks that took place and the history about it um, and, and how, how the lighthouse in that specific area came about. So thank you, Sister Mike. Uh, I just want to add the young van Riebeck, actually, when he came in 1652 during that period. He was the one actually emphasizing, hey guys, we're having trouble here every time when we reach this point, something must be done. Yeah. And they started actually having all those fires on Robin Island. Oh. But that was not the point. That was not the area where the lighthouse was supposed to. Because if you look at Robin Island and if you look at where the harbor is currently, it's far from each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they initiated that fire buildings and all those things until he indicated hey that lighthouse in 18 in 1800s when that first 1834 when the first one was built in Cape Town mm -hmm. that's the one they initiated also with the government, I presume with government and that was 200 years after he actually started verbalizing that so it shows you how long it does take to to set things up like that mm -hmm. so um, at this point, I want to thank you for taking time out to, to uh, um, share this honor with, with the Pathfinders and remind the Pathfinders that there's a link in the YouTube channel below. Um, in the comments, I want you to click on that link, which will take you to a form, an online form for you to submit all the information. And the nice thing is you can submit photos, you can submit recordings, video recordings, 
you can actually be very creative of how you fill in the information for this honor. Um, and I hope to see the different videos because we, we will be able to actually share those videos with the other pathfinders that they can see what you've done. So we would like to thank Sister Moira for taking her time out. Um, and uh, also we'd like to thank you for supporting this, this ministry. And may the Lord continue to bless you as you learn more about things in life. So at this point, Sister Mori, would you like to close up with a prayer for us, please? Okay, sure. Father Heaven, thank you for reminding us again that without you, we are nothing. The lighthouse, it was actually an instrument for me where I need to search myself of who is the foundation of my own soul. And today I bring all the pathfinders of our world before you, all our leaders, that whatever we do, that we should leave some light behind for somebody to follow. Mm. And my prayers, Lord, whatever we touch, whatever we do, that we will be that light for somebody. Mm. Be with us in a special way here in South Africa, here in Cape Town, and wherever we are, that you will protect us from all harm and danger. This is my humble in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.